your hands off. Shall I run for a doctor? Nothing. Nothing at all. I'm frequently taken with spells. Oh, sir, you must have dropped this. Dropped what? A dagger, sir. Isn't this your dagger? It's a beauty. Something for all Hallow's Eve? times. I've sold this place as some of the finest pieces they have. Tomorrow, sir. We're closed now. Sir, I told you we were closed. Where's your master? In the back, sir, but he can't be disturbed. He's going on a figure. Behind that door? Is that where he is? I wouldn't know, sir. <laughs> Stacks of gold. I wish you'd be kind and go, sir. Believe me, nothing will bring him out. Nothing? <coughs> oh, good of you to come out of your lairs. Really, Mr. Markheim. Be off. Off to whatever little nonsense you were off to. Will you tell me why you come here at this hour? Surely you know that I'm alone in my house and make a point of refusing business? Well, you'd better not refuse my business. Very well, Mr. Markheim, but you'll have to pay for that. And pay besides for a kind of manner that I regard in you today very strongly. Nonsense. I'm no different today than any day. What have you got under your cape? What? What is it you come to sell? Not a thing. Oh, don't worry, sir. We are alone here. You may speak out. Believe me, sir, I am the essence of discretion and ask no awkward questions. All I mean, Mr. Markheim, is that when a customer cannot look me in the eye, he has to pay for it. Yes, indeed I know. You've built your fortune on that, haven't you? On years and years of underpaying poor devils like myself. <laughs> Mr. Markheim, you can give, as usual, a clear account of how you came into the possession of the object underneath your cape. When I think of all the times I've seen that leer on your face. 
Holmes. All the times you brought these things from your uncle's cabinet. <laughs> my, 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 what a valuable collection he must have. And inexhaustible, I should say, wouldn't you? Almost as inexhaustible as all the fine houses one might steal from in London. Sir, you are in error. Oh? In absolute error. Really? Yes. I have recently done remarkably well at the gaming table. I come now not to sell, but to buy. Oh, well, 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 Mr. Markheim. Really, sir, I do felicitate you. Yes, I thought you would. And now, what may I show you? Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry I, I dropped the meat, uh, but I'll gladly pay with ten pounds, I believe. How do you happen to be in here? Don't you know the place is closed? I'm sorry, the door was open, and so I strolled in. Well, stroll off. That's all right, Mr. Markheim. I'll take care of this. Thank you, sir. Not at all. Good day, sir. And now, sir, what will it be? Uh, Mr. Markheim, I seek a birthday present for a lady. I must present my little compliment to dinner tonight. And as you well know, a rich marriage is not a thing to be neglected. Good heavens. What's that? A delightful old clock. It's called the murderer's clock, or time's revenge, because every hour there's another killing. Would you care for that, sir? No clocks. I think I want no clocks. Now, sir, how about a fine piece of glass? Now, there's a choice piece for a lady. A picture mirror, 15th century. Mirror? For a birthday? Surely not. Why not? Oh, look at it. Look at yourself. Do you like to see yourself? Do you really see yourself? No. Nor I. Nor any. <laughs> really, sir. You are in a difficult mood. Perhaps she could use a hand glass. I ask you for a present and you give me this hellish reminder of the years and sins. Father, do you mean for me to look and examine my life? Mm, sir, I do think you should rest for a minute. You appear to be all of a fever. You look. Examine your life and tell me. Is it worth an instant more? Really, sir, you must make your purchase and be off. Have you thought of a snuff box? Tell me, sir. Are you terrible? Are you pious? Are you scrupulous? Look here, see this dagger. Suppose the assassin's hand were hovering over you. What could you cry out? What could you possibly cry to be <laughs> safe? Really, sir? I'm forced to send for a constable. Are you loved? No. Are you loving? No. I see you looking at your locked door. What are you thinking? Will you live long enough to get back to your great chest? Gorged with gold. Is that your question? Then may I give you a proper reply? Uh No, wait. Wait. 
me. The past is irrevocable. Go in the back. Get the money. Get the gold. Get it so you can marry her. You love her. Now you can marry her. Hurry. Hurry. Second act of All Hallows Eve, starring Franchot Tom. What do you want? Be gone with you! Off! Now, off! All right. Rascals. What is it? Something for all the hollow Z's. How long have you been out there looking? Not long, sir. How long? Since I came in? Yes, sir. Yes. What did you see? You, sir. Is that all? You didn't see anybody else? Oh, no, sir. And even if we had, sir, we wouldn't tell. Wouldn't tell what? Wouldn't tell what we saw. Something for all hollow Here. Something for my brothers? <laughs>
Nature plays me a trick. What if the whole house falls? What if the solid walls become transparent? Did you see it all? You little devils, you saw it all the time. And you called the constable. Here, you things, take this. Take this. Mr. Marheim, there's someone in the shop. Mr. Marheim, don't you hear the footsteps in the shop? Taking some money, I believe. I should warn you that the maid has left uh, her sweetheart earlier than usual. She will soon be here. That tea is cold. No matter. Mr. Markheim, if you be found in this house, I need not answer for the consequences. You know me. You have long been a favorite of mine. I have long observed you. Who are you? A friend of yours, an admirer. And now I wish to help you. But you don't know me. I know you to the soul. I don't even know myself. My life is but a slander to myself. I live to belie myself. Actually, I hate evil. Look, look me in the face. Can't you see in me the clear writing of conscience? Can't you see me for what I am? An unwilling sinner. Ah, the servant delays. Looking in the window, but still she moves nearer. And remember, it is as though the gallows itself was dodging towards you through the holiday streets. Shall I help you up? Shall I help you uh, pack up your gold and escape? At what price? No price. I offer this service so simply as a gift. No, wait. I know who you are. I will take nothing at your hands. I will not commit myself to evil. Evil for which I live consists not of action, but of character. The bad man is dear to me, not the bad act. It isn't because you have killed a man that, uh, that I uh, want to help you. It's because you are Markheim, and that is why I want to help you escape. This is my last crime. From this, I've learned a momentous lesson. Today, from this deed, I've plucked not only riches, but warning. Today, I shall no longer be driven by poverty. I shall be married and respected and live my life in godliness. <laughs> well, why do you laugh at me? Can't you see that from now on, I'm a changed man? These hands will become the agents of good. My heart will at last be at peace. Markheim, in all the years, have been in this earth, I have watched you steadily fall. Don't block my way. I've killed once, I'll kill again. Fifteen years ago, you would have shuddered at the idea of a theft. Three years ago, you would have blenched at the name of murder. Downward, downward through the years, in every part of you, all of you goes with the looser rain. Therefore, content yourself with what you are. <laughs> For you will never change. No, I won't. Only let me out of here. I'll change. That's the maid. Do you remember? I forewarned you. And now, you let her in. And after you let her in, you will kill her very quietly as you killed her master. 
kill her. No. I'm going to change. Remember, you are committed to evil. You are no longer free to act. But that is the last evil deed of my life. Never. You are at the back of temptation. You belong to me. You belong to me without power or will. Open the door, Mark Hyde. Let the maid in quietly. Then let her turn quietly. And then kill her quietly. <laughs> Suspense is relinquishing its time in order that you may receive the election returns. Two weeks from tonight, our story will be The Moving Target, a story based on a recent true incident at the Olympic Games, a story well calculated to keep you in suspense. Laugh with Amos and Andy on the CBS television network.